presence of God. Let God alone be honored and praised. Thank you, mighty God. We glorify the King of Kings. We glorify the Lord of Lords. We glorify the everlasting God. Jesus, we say thank you. What a fellowship. What a joy divine. Lady. On the everlasting arms. What a blessedness. What a peace of mind. Leading on the everlasting arms. I'm leading, leading. everlasting arm the arm of flesh are fail cause we any man that chosen the arm of flesh we are leaning on your everlasting arm the arm that never fails we say thank you we glorify your holy name we appreciate you in Jesus mighty name we have worship our God Yahweh To the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, to Jesus, shout hallelujah. One more time, make it bigger to him, shout hallelujah. 
Please, the Lord, greet ourselves. Our God, Yahweh, is we. God bless us. God bless our family this month. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. And please, let us be seated in the presence of our God, Yahweh. I appreciate God for giving me this great privilege to bring a short word of charge. Hallelujah. Thank God, thank you for his servant, the head of mission, the senior pastor, the chief administrator, the pioneer of this great movement for granting me this privilege. I know it's not a right. I will keep saying it again and again. It's not a right. It is a privilege. We have one shepherd, one fool, one shepherd. And God has assigned his servant as the shepherd of this movement. So it's a privilege for me to bring a short word of charge. Praise the Lord. Also, I'd like to welcome our mommy, our mission director, in the presence of our God, Yahweh. Every one of you, those are connected to this great service as we prepare our hearts for the second war of the week. I'm to show the grace of Jesus, the Trinity God, operating in this movement and also upon the life of the seven. This grace shall speak for us in the name of Jesus Christ. I am in my fruitful season of God's goodness and mercy shall follow me. I am in my fruitful season. God speaking about the man Samuel. The Bible says all the words of Samuel all came to pass. Not, not one of his war fall to the ground. All came to pass. How will it come to pass? Paul told Timothy, my son, war with the world of prophecy that is gone ahead of you. You don't sit upon it. You don't wash it. You don't wish it. You war with it. Whenever the prophetic word is declared to the mother of God's servant, you don't wash it. You war with it. You declare. You keep declaring it. You pray along with it so that it will come to pass. Bible says he confirmed the word of his servant and also he performed the counsel of his messenger. For we know that the Lord God will do nothing except that which he has revealed. And God has revealed to his servant the prophetic word for this month. Goodness, mercy shall follow us. So don't wash upon our wall. Don't sit upon it. You declare it. You pray upon it, Lord. Let goodness, let mercy follow me. You keep declaring until the more finish. The Bible says the Lord God was walking with them. And the Lord God was confirming the war, the war with sons following. So you don't watch the prophetic war. You don't say with it. Paul told to make a war with the word of prophecy. The word has gone ahead of us in this month. You don't watch it. It should not just be a mad thing. No. God can never do anything outside of the ministry of the prophet. He said, I have seen the affliction of my people. I have come down to deliver them. But God never came down in person. He used the ministry of the prophet to bring the children of Israel out of the land of bondage. You won't see God in person. No. He uses him a vessel. These are agents of spiritual and physical change. So when they declare the war, you don't doubt it. You keep proclaiming it. You keep declaring it by faith. Lord, your servant say, your servant declare upon my life, goodness, mercy, let you speak in my life. You hear me today, by the grace of Jesus upon this movement, upon the life of a servant, goodness and mercy shall follow us in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody say, I receive it by the grace of God. The beginning of this month, God's servant said that uh, he gave out the, the scriptural divination of God's goodness and mercy. The scriptural divination or Bible divination of God's goodness and also God's mercy. He said the goodness of God is the loving kindness of God. The goodness of God is a what? Is a loving kindness of God. This is the love nature of God. 
And even God can read down to the worst sinner and bring him out of the pit and purify him via his blood and make him to be qualified to declare the word of God. That is the loving kindness of God. Speaking of the man Paul, he said, I am not meet to be called an apostle. Why? Because I prosecuted the church of God. But the mercy of God located him. So he said, it is not a he that went there. It is not a he that went there. But it is what? It is of God that what? That show what mercy. So he said, I am the least among all the apostles. But by grace, by the mercy of God, I labor than they all because of mercy. So, the mercy of God, you hear me today, is the goodness, the loving kindness of God. Praise the Lord. And another thing he said concerning the goodness of God, he said, is the compassion of God to us. Lamentation chapter 3 and verse number 22 to 23. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because a compassion they fail not. They are renewed every morning. Every morning we need the mercy of God. Every morning. They are renewed every morning. So as the morning comes, God renew his mercy. As the morning comes, God he renew his mercy. They are renewed every morning. You, you don't need, you can't make it outside of the mercy of God. Every day, you need a new mercy of God. The goodness of God. We need it every day of our lives. And he shall speak for us this month by the prophetic word through the mother of the seven in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So shortly for my end, I'll be bringing to you a short word of child message titled to Zion. The dwelling place of God's goodness and mercy. Man Zion. The dwelling place of God's goodness and also his mercy. Man Zion. The dwelling place of God's goodness. Man Zion, the dwelling place of God's goodness and also God's mercy. So when we speak about Man Zion, we are talking about the house of God. Praise the Lord, we are talking about the tabernacle of God. We are talking about the sanctuary of God. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. We are talking about the assembly of the brethren. We are talking about the presence of God, the house of God. So, Messiah is not a strange word. Especially when you are in a Christian environment or a spiritual environment. So, when we're talking about Messiah, we are talking about the central world of God, the church of God, the gathering, the assembly of the brethren. So, Messiah is a what? Is the dwelling place of God's goodness. Masayo is a dwelling place of God's mercy. And that is the reason why every child of God should endeavor. Don't allow nothing to disconnect you from the house of God. Because the house of God is a dwelling place of God's mercy. The house of God is a dwelling place of God's goodness. And I will show you from the word of God. We should not despise it. So if we read in the book of Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews said, he said, we should not forsake the assembly of ourselves. For as it is the manner of some. It's the manner. So some make it a responsibility to just despise the house of, they can choose between services. When is it? The first one is it? I will not go. The second one is it? I will not go. They are choosing. Many, 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 but I will go prophet in the major rest. When is it? The Bible says it should not be our manner. Because what? They forsake the assembly of the, of the brethren. We should not. Because as we gather in the house of God, the dwelling place of God, the sanctuary of God, the house of God, hear me today, we encounter God's goodness. We encounter God's mercy. We should not be familiar with this environment. Somebody said every day before God is better than the what? Than the day before. 
every day before God. Every day before God is better than the day before. So it should not be our lifestyle spiritually to begin to choose between services. The dwelling place of Messiah, hear me today, we encounter God's mercy. We encounter God's goodness. Psalms 87, 1 to 3. You already have it. Psalms chapter 87, 1 to 3. The foundation is a what is a holy mountain. The holy mountain is the house of God. The holy mountain is the dwelling place of God. His foundation is a what is the holy mountain. So the foundation of God spiritually, let me today, is a poor Messiah. The Lord loveth the gates of Zion. I read in Psalm 83, 7 verse 2. The Lord loveth the gates of Zion more than all the dwelling place of Jacob. The Lord loveth the gates of Zion. Why the Lord loveth the gates of Zion? Because upon my Zion there shall be holiness. There shall be deliverance. Upon my Zion we experience the goodness of God. We experience the, the blessing of God. The Lord loveth the gates of Zion more than all the dwelling places of Jacob. The Lord love it. So the love of God is upon his house. So based upon the love of God upon his house, when you appear or when you enter upon my Zion, you experience his mercy and also you experience his, what? his goodness. Oh, my knowledge is flying. Somebody please help me. More grace. Thank you, sir. Me holy. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord love it. So the love of God is upon his house. So if you continue dwelling upon his house, hear me today, you experience his mercy. You experience his goodness. And you see, that is the reason why you see God kept mercy for David. Read Psalms chapter 89 verse number 24. He said, I kept mercy for David unto a thousand generations. Because David loved the house of God. He said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than to do it in the tent of wickedness. i rather. So, God kept mercy for David. Even in his shortcoming, even in his weakness. God pour you out. Because he may love the house of God. One time they went for battle. After he was tested for water, he sent his a, a general. They went out. They took, they took water from the, from the land of the Philistine. After they brought the water, he said, he said, it is a sin for me to drink water with the blood of the mountain. But also he went to the temple of God. He took the water and poured it in the house of God. The love for the house of God. So because that everywhere David went, he enjoyed God's goodness and he enjoyed God's mercy. So he, he was the one that, if you see mercy, goodness, the book of Psalm, 98 times, mercy, goodness. Good night king, 96 Psalm, mercy king, 98 times. In the entire Bible, they may enjoy the mercy of God, they may enjoy the goodness of God because what? The house of God was a dwelling place. Don't allow nothing to discourage you. If you appear upon my Zion, you hear me today, you experience God's goodness. You experience God's mercy. See verse number 7, verse number 3 of Psalms 83, or Psalm 87. Psalm 87, verse number 3. The Bible says, Glorious things are spoken of thee, O city of God. Glorious things. The city of God has to do with the house of God. Glorious things are spoken of thee. Glorious things in the house of God. Glorious things are spoken of these. Let God help us. And that is the reason why you see when the devil won't get to you, the first thing you do, he will disconnect you from the house of God. Because he knows it. In the house of God, you have a spiritual covering. So he will disconnect you. He will make sure that you are offended in the house of God. 
He will make sure that he will show you some wrong wrong pain that is not even necessary. So that he will disconnect you from the house of God. Then if you answer on the hand of God, also on the house of God, no mercy, no goodness, then you are venerable. You are venerable. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. So the mercy and the goodness of God rest in the bar upon Mount Zion, which is the dwelling place of God. The mercy and the goodness of God rest in also a bar upon Mount Zion, which is the dwelling place of God. Psalm chapter 5 and verse number 7. But as for me, I will come into the house into the house in the multitude of the mercy I will come because I know in the house of God there are multitude of mercy I will come nothing will distract me I will come nothing will hinder me because in the house there are multitude of mercy even in my limitation mercy will prevail my shortcoming mercy will prevail my weakness mercy will prevail because what? in the house of God multitude Multitude, multitude of the mercy. Psalm chapter 5 and verse number 7. In a multitude. Also, that you may not find multitude, you may find revenge. But in the house of God, you get multitude, diversity of God's mercy that can reach all. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter your limitation. Now what Psalm David says, Psalm 23 and verse number 6, six he says, surely goodness and what? And mercy shall what shall follow me all the days of my life. And our what? I will do what what in the house of God. I will do it there. Because surely and goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I will do it in the house of God. Because in the house of God there is mercy. Let God help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Psalms 102 and verse number 13. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon, upon Zion, upon Zion, for the time to favor Yea, the said time is come. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon my Zion. God will arise on my Zion because the mercy of God. So if you appear upon this mountain, God will arise on your behalf. So I charge you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and also the grace of God that is upon this movement and upon the life of his self. Don't allow nobody to disconnect you from my Zion. Because this place is a dwelling place of God's mercy. This house is a dwelling place of God's goodness. What must I do for God's goodness and mercy to follow me? Upon my Zion. What must I do? What must I do for God's goodness and also for God's mercy to follow me upon my Zion? What must I do? We need to know what to do. Because if you don't know what to do, you may appear upon this mountain, you may be disqualified. You may appear upon this mountain not knowing what to do. You may come by, you may go by empty. What must I do for God's goodness, for God's mercy to follow me upon my Zion? What must I do? Be truthful and acknowledge your limitation and also your weaknesses to God. Be truthful and also acknowledge your limitation. And knowledge of weakness or weaknesses of God. Be truthful. And knowledge your weakness and knowledge your limitation to God. Be like the man David. Be truthful. Don't have anything. Because you see, the Bible says everything is bare open to God. So if you read the book of Hebrews, chapter number 4 and verse number 16, let us come boldly to the to the truth of grace, which is my Zion. We shall find grace 
and mercy to what to help us. Come boldly. Don't be a sheep. Be truthful. Acknowledge your weakness. Acknowledge your limitation. Be truthful to yourself. And also you acknowledge your weakness. Acknowledge your limitation. When we come in the person of God, don't let what God said was said, God said it. Don't justify anything. If you know you are struggling in certain areas of your life, as you appear upon this mountain, you are not focusing on enemy. Focus on the Lord. This is my limitation. Lord, this is my weakness. It may be addiction. It may be inability. It may be sin. It may be weight. It may be emotional challenge, but be truthful and knowledge your limitation and knowledge your weakness to God. Be truthful and also you acknowledge your weakness and knowledge your limitation. Psalm chapter 51 and verse number 2. Psalm David said, Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me. I acknowledge it. Wash me thoroughly for I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is before me against thee. Only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight that thou may be justified when thou speak and be clear when thou justified. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity and in sin that my mother conceived me. Behold, thou desire truth in the inner part. He said till my mother conceived me. The man was truthful. The man acknowledged his limitation. He acknowledged his weakness. He said till my mother conceived me. There be iniquity. He said, Behold, the Lord desired truth in the what in the inner part. He said, By so doing, He will make me to know wisdom. Be truthful to yourself. If you are struggling. But that challenge that is a hindrance to your spiritual life, be truthful and knowledge go into that matter, and you will help you. You will experience God's goodness, and also you will experience His what His mercy. Don't try to bury anything. Don't try to pretend. Don't try to hide your feeling. Be truthful. The Bible says, "Become bully." It's almost like a son. Maybe you go to work and your son, he, he just ran to you and say, Father, mercy, mercy. Your first thing you say, mercy for what? Mercy for what? You have to acknowledge it. You have to acknowledge that limitation. You have to acknowledge that weakness or weaknesses in your life. Lord, this is my challenge. You may have short temper when you get angry, forget it. You can blast before you even come to yourself. Lord, this is my challenge. Sometimes I want to talk, I, I, don't, I don't know how to overcome this. Be sure for be sincere. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Psalm chapter 6 and verse number 1. O Lord, rebuke not that me in the anger, not chasing me in the heart is please. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am weak. In the person of God, don't justify yourself. Some David said, For I am weak. Oh Lord, heal me. For my bones a vest. My soul is also grievously vest. For thou, oh Lord, how long? Return, oh Lord, deliver my soul and save me for the mercy's sake. I am weak. My bones a grievously vest. Save me. The man was truthful to himself. They may acknowledge his limitation. If you want to experience the mercy of God, the Bible says it's not a he that with it. It's not a he that won it. When you come to when you come to the mercy of God, the goodness of God, it has nothing to do with your ability. So acknowledge your weakness or weaknesses. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. 
Psalm 31 and verse number 9. Psalm David said again, Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am troubled. My eyes is consumed with grief. Yea, my soul and my body. For my lot is spent with grief and my years with sunny. My strength faileth because of my iniquity and my boom consuming. Verse number 5 of Psalm 32. I acknowledge my sin unto thee and my iniquity have I not had. I said, I will confess my transgression unto my God and thou forgive them my iniquity and my sin I say I will do it be truthful be sincere that weakness all that weaknesses that you are going through ask God to help you how do you do that you be truthful and you acknowledge your weakness or limitation acknowledge it then you experience the mercy and the goodness of God. When you experience the mercy of God, the mercy of God will come now to cover that limitation. Will cover that weakness or that weakness. Will cover that shortcoming. Then you see yourself overcoming the things that you never need to overcome. It happened to the man Paul. The man wrote to tell of the New Testament. He said there was a toe in my flesh. I besought the Lord to us so that God would take away the toe from my flesh. God said, no, my grace is sufficient. My mercy is sufficient. My grace is sufficient for you. So the man said, I'd rather glory in my infirmity that the mercy of Christ will rest upon me. Be truthful and acknowledge your limitation. Be truthful and acknowledge your limitation. And you will see the mercy of God demonstrating into your life and you will overcome that thing cheaply. The man said, the good I want to do, I do the not. The evil that I don't want to do, he said, that I do. He said, it's not I. What he said at the end of the day, he said, who will deliver me from the border? He said, I tell God, thank you that he will deliver me. He acknowledged mercy, he acknowledged the goodness of God. We are overcoming upon this mountain by the mercy and the goodness of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So be truthful. Acknowledge your weakness. Acknowledge your limitation. And if you do so, you will see the mercy and the goodness of God upon your life in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Please help me on our feet. Lord, we acknowledge our limitation by your mercy. It is not a heat of weather. It is not a heat of runner. It is a God that show us mercy. Lord, we acknowledge we are sincere upon this 